finally, the restoration of the Panasonic RC7462 is complete. Uh, this clock has been, without a doubt, the most humbling, difficult restoration I've ever done. I'm going to cut back, go back in time here and show you a few of the things right towards the end of the restoration. One of the things you'll notice is there's a, there's a light that lights this up here, the uh, alarm selector. It's actually in wrong, so when I eventually try to put the cover on, it uh, broke that light. The we uh, in the the light that I was able to replace it with is a uh, six volt, fifty milliamp uh, light from Radio Shack. I don't know what I'm going to do with that Radio Shack. And I this is an example of when I had a twelve volt, fifty milliamp that I spliced in. And what you have to do is you have to use some um, shrink wrap to build up the size so that this grommet here holds onto it and keeps it in place. And what I found was it lights up the the indicator but also the dial. So we're going to go back in time and look at a little bit of that, uh, the last part of the restoration and then we'll have a final reveal of the black lighted clock. At this point in the restoration we've come a long way on the clock but uh, we've had some substantial issues um, restringing the the tuner this thing here was a lot harder than I thought it would be getting the ball bearings back underneath here a lot harder than I thought a uh, couple issues I was I tried to replace this light with a 12 volt 50 milliamp and it, it wasn't uh, correct so I had to take this light off of another clock that is that was working because th this is obviously a six volt. Um, you trace the leads back. I measured the current. It's actually AC that's coming off of here to power this, and it's AC at approximately six volts. It is doable to solder it into the board while the board is still in place. And again, you don't want to take this off. Trust me, just don't do it. You can get access in here and and get the leads off of that if you trace them back. It wasn't too bad uh, on that. Now the black light. I've got an LED festoon bulb, and by gosh, I sure did have to hot glue that in to get it because the holder I had for it wouldn't fit in between here. So I may go another path. I may go ahead and get some other LEDs to see. There's different kinds of dots and bulbs and stuff that I could try, and I may try that later down the road. Big problem I had was I thought, well, how am I going to power that? Well, I thought my idea was to take the original, the original um, line that went to the to the fluorescent bulb. And I've got another clock over here where the fluorescent bulb is still in place. So that's AC. Um, a high voltage is like um, for some reason it reads over 120. Again, I haven't figured out how that how that's possible, but that's it's uh, AC. So I thought I'd take that line and use a converter. Use this converter to uh, to power my bulb, but if you might be able to see, it says for uh, for operation with LED modules only, which I thought was fine, except that it caused a substantial amount of of radio interference with um, AM only. And my wife tried to tell me, well, who listens to AM radio and who uses their flip clocks for radios anyway? I just couldn't abide by that. So what I did was I searched down here on my uh, circuit board and conveniently labeled um, negative and positive. Uh, I've got I got um, 12 a reading of 12 volts there, which would be enough to power my LED. So I drilled a small hole in the board in an open area, fed a wire up through there, and there was actually an open hole for some reason, and I was able to feed up in there. Now that does power my light. Only problem being when you play the radio, the light kind of kind of uh, pumps to the music. Now again, family thinks that's really cool, but it wasn't intended. I don't think it was intended to do that. So uh, yeah, I'm fluctuating on what I want to do with that. Probably going to leave it be. It uh, tapping into that 12 volt on the board doesn't do have any other negative effects that I can tell yet. We'll we'll do a longer run later to see. Uh, but I'm going to leave it that way at this point. So, no transformer. Uh, I've got plans for this little thing. 
I think I'm going to put it in, in my clock display. I'll put some LEDs up to light the display uh, of all, all of the clocks that I have someday. So it wasn't a waste of money, probably. But anyway, that's where I'm at now. Um, still struggling to get this back together. Uh, another thing is when I was looking, I've got to look at the old video I made on the disassembly to, to make sure how the speaker goes in, which direction it's oriented. But part of the doze button, there was a uh, post that had broken off. So I just took a pair of, um, of uh, side cutters, went in on my other cabinet, which is kind of messed up, and I just broke that sucker off, and I got lucky. I've super glued that in there. And um, here lately I've been using um, kind of a, a gel, gel super glue. This is Loctite. And on this... Uh, these plastics, it does melt into the plastic slightly, but not not ridiculously. As as I may have told in the past, uh, anything uh, there's some solvents that you just can't use with this, and one of them is uh, oh, this is fingernail polish remover. Is the name of that? It's not coming to me right now. But acetone. Um, you use acetone, it's going to melt it. So um, super glue has components of that. In fact, you can take acetone to get super glue off. But man, once that's on, it's on. So it, it fuses to the plastic. All right, so still struggling to get this back together. Let's just press on. Here's the Panix Sonics uh, RC7462, the black lighted clock. Uh, what you can't tell from the video and from pictures I've taken is the, the black light doesn't show up like it does in real life. In real life, it's more of that day glow green that you, if you remember from the 70s, what uh, black lighted stuff looks like, or I don't know if that's come back or not. Anyway, what we've got is a clock that, uh, now works very well. So we've got the FM, the AM light, lights up. Late on Sunday, March 22nd. Visit Gardner's Now, if you look at the light, and what you may see is that it pulses a little bit to this to music. You can see that more. I can see it more here than you may be able to see it in the video. The clock works good. The, the alarm works good. Here's the alarm uh, light, and it does light. The same light lights up the dial. There's a little piece of reflective material on the back side here. Now let's set it for the alarm. Okay, there's the alarm. The doze button works. What I found is the doze button doesn't work except with the uh, tripping alarm. Interestingly enough, when the other clock that I used to do part of the restoration, the wire that came from the doves had never been soldered, and you can tell they left it off, so whoever had that clock, <laughs> I just don't know why this doze doesn't work. Well, that's why it didn't work. Well, that's the end. The Panasonic RC7462, and one heck of a restoration. If you see one in working condition on eBay, and someone's restored it, Whatever they're asking for it, that's how much it's worth. Well, thanks for watching. Come visit us at flipclockfans.com.